Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have an amplified speaker here. This is from one of the local Irish bars, and they are Irish, which isn't true of all the Irish bars we have here, by the way. The owner says that it has a problem with the mains socket, like if you waggle it or something like that, he thinks the socket is broken. So that's basically what we have. So let's try it. I won't bother with the light bulb because I, he's had this powered up, so it's not going to blow up most likely. So we'll switch it on. And this light came on and went off, okay? Oh, and I'll waggle this, yeah, and I'll waggle this and that, see it there? This is the power button. Red low battery, green power on. So this thing has a battery. It also has a, a power on button here, which says microphones. Oh, you probably need to press them both. No. So that doesn't switch on or appear to. And this is flickering. Uh, oh, then that went green and red. You can see what's happening. I'm getting seeing the greens on now. Charge. Oh, green for full, orange for charge. So it's obviously charge. Ah, oh, that's come on now. <laughs> it's like gone a bit nuts, this thing, hasn't it? Okay. I'll unfreeze my camera. So this is obviously upsetting the USB hub. And now let's have a look. There we go. I'll take the PCB unit out, all this panel, and then we can maybe figure out what's going on with this thing. I have the amplifier unit out. I've seen this brand many times. QTX, that's not the manufacturer, that's a brand. I did know who this was, I can't quite remember. And they actually produce stuff under quite a number of different brands. This is a 200 watt RMS. I don't know whether RMS in small letters, lowercase, means something different from RMS in uppercase, but that's what we have, yeah. So this is a 12.8 volt transformer, and this feeds the amplifier, and that, my friends, is the amplifier chip, yeah. I'm not sure if this is effectively like a stereo chip, so it's used in mono mode if you like, but one for the bass speaker and one for the horn speaker. But our 200 watts comes out of this transformer and goes into there. I'd love to know what that chip actually is. I've seen them before, but I can't remember. And it looks like this one they may actually have removed the markings but I'm interested yeah so I'm gonna uh, just um, see if I can take this panel out I think I can and get a better look at it let's see what we actually have here for our 200 real RMS watts okay we will do this of course this is nothing to do with fixing it this is just interesting yeah <sighs> this is just interesting so let's see what we have i used to get a lot of this stuff there was a guy in birmingham in the uk who had this on ebay and he was obviously buying it from the company who i remember their uk headquarters were in manchester uk and he would have pallets of it so he'd have four or five pallets and you would bid on the pallet and if you won generally speaking most of the pallets fetched about 200 pounds but they would be like stacked like six foot high with plastic sheeting around them so you couldn't see everything that was in there you show your photos from all four sides and you kind of got what you got interesting the battery light is on and I've actually disconnected the battery must be some charge in some capacitor somewhere I like that discharge yeah there it goes oh it's flickering it looks like this switch has a problem see that
I think the switch has a problem. Actually, the switch doesn't operate very well. I think the on-off switch has a fault with this. Okay. This also, you know, so this will run on battery. It has a battery, yeah. And it says, I think, it will run for eight hours on the battery. So, it, well, this is not a class D amplifier, I'm sure. So, even at 100% efficiency, it's likely to be more like 50. This battery for eight hours, that's like, uh, what is it? 1,600 amp hours. Yeah. But this would have to supply this battery. Uh, the battery is not very big, by the way. I'll have a look at the rating of the battery in a minute as well. Yeah, we'll do a big climb on this or something like that. <laughs> so, what we've got. So, I think I need to take this out anyway because it looks like the switch is faulty. And there's an LED there, that's it. Okay, so here is our amplifier. I'll have to disconnect a few wires. Make a note of where they go to. These ones, well, we could mix them up, I guess. This one goes here. Okay. I think we have it far enough out to work on it. Maybe. <laughs> this is unbelievable guys yeah so they have made an effort to obliterate the markings on the chip yeah uh, so we don't know what it is easily okay uh, and then on the silk screen it says TDA 7377. <laughs> oh my god. The competence of these people, it's like, that's a stunner, yeah? TDA 737. So we know what the 200 watt output is. This stuff, I think, is just glue to stop the capacitor waggling around because these things are meant to be portable, they have a battery in them. They have built-in radio mic and they have a built-in mp3 player so that's what they actually are but let's have a look at our mysterious tda 7377 and see how many of the 200 watts rms this will produce i tell you guys the anticipation is too much for me yeah 7377 data sheet oops too many numbers data sheet what's it tell us about this uh, it's a two times 30 watt amplifier yeah uh, two times 30 watt is that 30 watt rms or just 30 watts made up let's have a look no it's, it's two times 35 watt max so it's probably like 10 or 20 watt rms amplifier two of them and quite clearly they're using one to drive the bass speaker and one to drive the tweeter yeah the horn yeah 14 volts supply so that's our 200 watt amplifier Can I ask in your jurisdiction, do they have such a thing as trading standards who like go around looking for fake and counterfeit and goods that are misdescribed? And if they do, how can these things be on the market from such a large company in large quantities, quite legally apparently? Uh, it's made for car radio. So guys, now I have taken the mick out of this thing yeah called it out for what it is and for what it isn't 
I suppose I'd better try and fix it. I've also just spotted down here this little bit of like a component leg rattling around inside this, yeah. So much for quality control as well as product description, yeah. Well, they're still charging the capacitor because the lights are lighting up slightly, but you see this switch is definitely dodgy. Push in. It's working a bit better now, but I don't have any switches like that one. Yeah, you see that time it didn't activate, yeah. Yeah, I don't have any. I'll try and put some uh, switch cleaner in and see if that uh, helps any. There's a bit of corrosion on this as well, by the looks of it, or something like that. Hmm. Let's try a bit of ISO. Okay. It's cleaned off, whatever it is. That's the problem when these things are used in bars and clubs, as there seems to be plenty of fluids around of various descriptions. <laughs> so uh, that seems to be the case. Right. Can we get the switch to work properly? Well, strangely enough, even that seems to have helped it. Maybe a bit of ISO went down the side of the switch because it now seems to be working. I'll get some switch cleaner. So this is a WD-40 uh, Limpiador de Contactos, which is switch cleaner. Yeah, in Spanish. Cleaner of cleaner of contacts. Uh, okay, there's definitely uh, some of that went down there. Okay, let's let's see if that's good enough to clean it. And then I'll check the connection on the mains socket because that seems a little bit dodgy as well. Okay, we'll let that dry out a bit. So this just goes directly to the transformer, to the ground terminal. Not a lot you can say there really. Wires seem to be soldered on just fine, a little bit of heat shrink. Don't like the way they've wrapped that down the back of there. It's a little bit unnecessary, I think. Uh, having said that, it looks like, yeah, from where the contact comes down there, it's going to go that way anyway, really. See if I can actually pull the wires through a little bit. Oh, that's what's wrong with it. Luke. Luke. Uh, that's what's wrong with the power socket. So that's two little problems found. Let's fix that. Obviously broken away. You can see, you can see where... Yeah, there's a soldering iron warmed up. You can see where the solder's kind of like flat there. So that was on here. I don't think they perhaps got enough heat into it when they originally soldered that. I think this is a basically a uh, production issue bit of flux bit of uh, proper solder yeah, I, I like the mechanic leaded solder it works fine let's uh, see if we can fix this without taking this off I don't have any heat shrink of that size I'd rather try and leave it on if I can Okay, a bit more, Let's see if we can get the solder. Yeah. Uh. 
that's good and solid now I'll just check the other one looks okay yeah the live one's okay I like these sort of jobs if this is fixed it these are like bread and butter jobs yeah because you can charge well whatever you feel like really I guess but I mean to me generally jobs now are 45 for this sort of work I don't think that's too far out of the way and it kind of makes up a little bit for the ones that are more demanding but they're still 45 unless they're 65 yeah for bigger ones and then so on uh, so yeah let's see if this works I'll put it back together we'll just give it a try I'll put the uh, current limiter on now because um, I've been doing things with it yeah so it's always a good precaution can uh, connect the power lead I'll put the uh, other camera where you can see the current limiter you guys have been asking will I show you how to build one it's been done before but not by me so yep in the new year early on I will do that by popular demand yeah okay there you have it so the light bulb is just there so it should come on bright and go dim well actually it didn't do anything but I'll press the power button well it's powered on yeah it's not drawing hardly any power so we can switch that so this is now lighting up properly yeah um, we can power off power on yeah blue light comes on here now as well so this looks good I can connect it to the speaker stick a USB in with a bit of music on and we can just give it a quick try uh, switch is on little blue lights on see if it'll play something yeah oh yeah there we go so yeah that's working fine that is guys that is working just fine okay so uh, one more repaired a slightly dodgy volume control but uh, he didn't mention that yeah I'll just give that a bit of a clean as well and then uh, hopefully we can just give him this back and he'll be happy with it yeah okay guys so that is fixed working I put a little bit of cleaner in the volume control it seems pretty much all right now maybe a little bit crackly but it's not like they are adjusting the volume on this thing all of the time so that can go back to the bar hope you enjoyed that just goes to prove that sometimes it just isn't that difficult to fix things I quoted the customer at 45 and he was more than happy so quick profit bit of Christmas spending money and I will see you all soon on another Word Electronics Repair video ciao for now guys